Pia. Good boy. <laughs> I'm gonna plug you in. Good boy. Where's me keys? There we go. Good morning, Mr. Douglas. Dougie, hey. What are we doing? We're gonna go to Motorsports Accessories and go spend all the rest of our money. Who's that? Bye. 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 Easy, Bud's on. See ya. Alrighty, let's go, mister. So I honestly don't know why, I thought I'd bring Dougie for a bit of a cruise this morning just to have some fun, but uh, motorsports accessories, you guys all know them. I've been back here uh, five, six times since uh, trying to do this RX-7 single turbo build just because they have all the fittings I need and they're so close, which is awesome. But uh, I'm definitely going to have to come back because I need to do some more stuff with the radiator hoses, but I need to work that all out once I get the Vinifab order, which I will let you guys know, we have ordered parts from Vinifab, which is awesome. So they make a coil kit. God, it's hot, isn't it, Douglas? I'm going to turn the aircon on. They make a coil kit with uh, all the looms and everything to match up with the standard harness, all the coils, uh, all the leads, everything to go straight onto the FD and sits on top of the engine where the standard coils are, which is awesome. So uh, yeah, not only that, grabbed, I'll swap out some of my uh, my 4mm ones for some 6mm ones because we're going to need some of them as well, which is nice. A 1 8 MPT boost reference as well for the turbo which we can tap out um, with our tap we just got as well. So this is a 1 8 MPT tap which is sick. Not only that, we also have this right here which is a Denso plug because I destroyed one of my Denso plugs as I was putting it in. It's just so hot in between that uh, upper intake plenum and everything so I've got some new Denso plugs. Apart from that, Douglas is smashed. Look at him. You right there, mister? You had fun barking at everyone in motorsports accessories? I think so. Yeah? You tired? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're tired, aren't you? You get a little bit scared. Probably should harness the up, eh? So once again, thank you to the guys down at Motorsports Accessories. If you guys need anything, fittings, lines, this is the one place to go to. They always have everything I need in stock. It's mint. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. All right, so we're back home. Got uh, 30, yeah, 33. Yep, yep, that's it. And the RX-7's still on there. Have I ever tapped a hole in my life? No. Am I about to attempt it on my 1,000 horsepower rated brand new Hypergear Turbo? Yes. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide it sort of down in the corner down here so that way I can just shoot it straight down and it's gonna come up and plumb to the mat valve which is either gonna be just down here or up the back there. So I'm gonna take off the intake right here. We're gonna expose that beautiful T51R front housing right there. And we're just gonna tap it straight into the side of the turbo there. Now this should be pretty easy. Um, the swarf will all go down so I'm just gonna take off this intercooler pipe right there uh, so that way we can catch all the swarf. Um, and put a little thing down there, make sure we don't make a mess because uh, I don't want to start rust. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I will admit I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, we'll see how we go. Plus today we can also do this injector plug right here because I did end up snapping one of my injector plugs by accident. Then we can also go around and we can um, fix up all the 6mm silicon. Um, we can fix up all the 6mm back lines we need to, need to fix. We also have a 1 8 NPT tap, which I am very nervous to use. But we'll see how we go. How hard can it be, right? How hard can it be? Oof. Look at that. Beautiful. I'll admit, that looks pretty freaking good in there. Whew. Man, I can't wait for this thing to uh, start up for the first time. It's going to sound so impressive. Alrighty, okay, so now we're just going to pull off that lower part of the intercooler piping there. I'm just going to put a rag underneath it to catch all the swarf. We're just going to drill straight into there. This is a little bit scary, but we will, we will sort it. <laughs> oh god. Um, so I'm standing off with a smaller drill bit. We're just going to, I guess, send it right in about there-ish, so that way it gives us enough room to move around the turbo. Let's see if I can go in a little bit more inward so you don't really see it as much. 
helps if the drill's going the correct way. For anyone cringing right now, please, I, this is my first time. <laughs> Oh god, there is a hole in my turbo. Oh lord. Okay, alright, next is to drill an 8mm hole. I tell you what though, I'm loving these new drill bits. So nice. Annoyingly enough, I got uh, nice drill bits, but they didn't have any uh, metric sizing, so I have all these... Um, all these other drill bits. Alrighty, this should fit snug in the first section. Beautiful, then we can tap it out. Now I've never tapped anything before in my life, so please don't do what I'm about to do and use a shifter. It's gonna clean up that a little bit. Make sure there's no burrs or anything on the inside, which there isn't, which is nice much much later for never tapping anything that was not as bad as i thought but it was also very scary all right so i just put on a little bit of permatex thread sealer so now you should be right to simply just screw that straight in oh that was precision right there that's a little bit scary <laughs> so because this is a tapered thread you go until it's tight not until it's all the way in it's a freaking horrible spot, but that's completely fine. We will work around that. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, the, the fact that I eyeballed everything and the fact that you're probably not supposed to do that in that part of the turbo and the fact that that fitting was definitely a lot bigger than I remember it being, um, actually worked out all right. <laughs> so that wasn't the great, that, that wasn't fun. <laughs> that was not fun at all. So anyway, that's all in there now. Uh, we now have a boost reference straight from the turbo and it is going to be hidden underneath the intake manifold which is going to look sick So I'm pretty happy about that um, It definitely does go into the turbo. <laughs> I, I have checked. I can feel it through the other side So um, and it's in there very tight with some thread sealer, so we should be fine there But uh, that was definitely scary. Do not attempt to do that. I did that completely wrong in a completely wrong spot Don't do that. That was bad. Please roast me in the comments. That was freaking terrifying Okay, I, although I did screw it up, that is a nicely routed vac line. Now I just have to work out exactly where I want to place the Mac valve. I do just want to try and keep all the electrics out of the the, the heat and also, well, the weather. Um, so it's kind of difficult when you have this. Uh, even though this car probably won't be in the rain, um, I just don't want to have to worry about it. So um, I'm sort of debating whether I route it up the front here or whether I route it down the back there. Kind of down the back would look a little bit nicer. So um, yes, uh, anyway. Another thing I really wanted to talk to you guys about, I don't know, you guys are, you guys are certainly learning from my mistakes today. Um, I am not a mechanic. I have, I have been trialing, failing, and getting stuff right, potentially. Um, basically, my whole experience life, back when I started this YouTube channel, I don't know if any of you guys know, it used to take me, like, I used to be pushed for time changing wheels on my old NA Falcon. Like, it had taken me probably a good two hours to change a set of wheels on a car. Um, and now I'm doing basically a full turbo conversion on my RX-7, which is very, very different. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, you guys are all learning from my mistakes today. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys another mistake that I made just the other day. So if you guys remember my brand new full river battery that we got for the uh, battery relocation on the RX-7, this thing has been absolutely amazing um, for the one drive that I got it out for, which was nice. Um, battery felt great that drive. The amount of the amount of volts and amps that it pushes um, improved the killer wasps, kill, improved the killer wasps, and um, the car after a retune with the new battery picked up. I, it's I think the. It picked up about 50 horsepower. The battery is rated for 1500 horsepower, but that's only if you get a massive alternator as well. So we'll sort of that out a little bit later. Anyway, the battery, I thought I thought my multimeter was reading differently and I went and I borrowed someone else's multimeter and uh, it wasn't lying. That battery right there, I had left the ignition on from after I went and got the fabrication work done and the battery had dropped to 0 .1, 0 0.715 volts. I'm not even joking, zero volts in that battery right there. I have probably damaged it. 
I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I borrowed my, borrowed this C-Tech charger from work from Brett. Massive thank you to Brett for letting me borrow it. Um, so we grabbed the battery charger and I plugged it all in, hooked it up, and the charger wouldn't even recognize that that was a battery that it could charge. So I'm just like, okay, I need this. I need this to charge somehow. I need it. I, I don't want to go out and spend another 400 bucks on a battery when it's like two months old. Um, once again, I've probably already done damage to that battery. I, I feel horrible, but um, yeah, we're just going to hope it works for a little bit anyway. Once again, learn from my mistakes. Do not discharge a battery that much. Anyway, um, what I did was I actually had Sarah's old battery battery sitting, sitting down here because I actually had Sarah's old and actually this is the old RX7 battery sitting down here and amazingly it still had 11 volts in it I'm like okay radio so I wonder if we can trick the charger into thinking it's charging this battery but it's actually charging this one here and that way we might be able to pick it up a little bit and that way we can you know make this work somehow <laughs> so I used some jumper cables from that battery right there which is also um, I'm going to need to charge up in a second as well um, but I grabbed some jumper cables, I bridged these two batteries together, and then I connected the charger to this battery here. So it kind of like, you know, did that, then that, then that. So that way I could trick that charger into charging this battery, thinking it's charging that battery. Um, sure enough, after about five minutes of having it plugged in, I managed to trick this charger into charging that battery just enough that it recognized it as a battery and it started charging it. And sure enough, that thing is currently sitting at 12.8 volts, which is mint. So I'm just gonna leave that charger plugged in and just let let the charger do its thing. It's one of those smart chargers that does everything it needs to do. That's pretty cool. Um, but I am, I'm blown away at the fact that I managed to get that to work. Once again, I am definitely not sure whether that's how you're supposed to do it. I did just save myself 400 bucks though. I don't know how long that battery is going to last. I've most likely damaged something, but it works. So far, I don't know what I've damaged. I've definitely damaged done like something, but fingers crossed. <laughs> Once again, learn from my mistakes. This is gonna be the most horrible video you guys have ever seen. Man, the trolls are gonna be hectic in the comments today. <laughs> this is gonna be scary. Anyway, what else can we do to the RX-7? Ooh, we can do that injector port. Let's, let's pin that new injector plug. So, I don't know if you guys saw in one of the previous videos, I ended up damaging one of my Denso plugs for the injectors. Um, basically just because this car is so old and because it's so hot down here, I'll quickly show you what I did. Let's see if I can do that right there. Um, this injector plug right, where did I put it? Right here. So, I don't know if you guys can see that right there. See if we can focus on it right now on my camera. There you guys go. You can see that I completely snapped that plug off. So if we go to connect it in, it can basically just slip back off. So we're gonna cut those two wires right there. We're gonna repin uh, with a new Denso plug. Um, and then yeah, we'll get that sorted as well. But uh, yes, that was also very scary. I didn't like that. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna do this. Once again, do not copy my actions. This is backyard mechanics at its finest. I'm gonna probably speed this up so that way you can try and miss everything that I'm doing. Um, Cause yeah, things are about to get Okay, so new injector plug is on now. Pull test, they're all good. I'm just gonna swap that back through there. Now we have all of our injectors actually properly done, all the wiring's done, and we can start playing with some vacuum lines now. But uh, that's definitely a lot nicer. That's wicked. All right, so now, uh, things I did right in this video. <laughs> So a couple of nights ago, I ended up getting a few bits of Vinifab. You guys all know that I have been wanting to get some Vinifab parts on the car for ages. Originally, we were gonna try and work out something, but at the end of the day, I just ended up buying them outright. They're something that I've always wanted to have on the car, and just even having their parts on this would be awesome. So if they're watching, you guys make great products, and I hope to work with you guys in the future. But as for now, I ended up ordering the parts anyway. We ended up getting a full set of their coils, and I'll show you guys right now exactly what that is and what we have coming. It's very, very cool. Uh, the bracket and everything, I just, it looks so cool. So it's about a thousand bucks, but if you guys can see right here, 
So it's a bracket with the coils, with the looms and everything. So even though the coils are roughly about 450 bucks, just having the bracket and the wiring looms and everything else there, um, just the fact that it's all gonna be plug and play and I don't have to stress about anything and doing any more wiring, I really don't want anything to happen. Like I'm okay with wiring in the car, but just the whole ignition system, I would just rather leave up to the professionals because if I happen to screw up anything in terms of like injectors, in terms of in terms of the coils, in terms of the ECU wiring or anything. Um, I don't want to stress about that sort of stuff. I would rather leave it up to people that actually know. And so going out and getting that really nice and well put together kit is definitely a must for me. So that's gonna sit on top of the engine right there in exactly the same places where my original coils were sitting. So um, yeah, we're gonna have a fresh set of brand new coils, plugs that plug straight into the factory loom, which is absolutely wicked. So I'm very, very happy about that. And the second part that we bought of Vinifab is this right here, which is their air separator tank delete kit, which is awesome. So what this is going to do is this is going to remove the factory air separator tank um, that usually sits just down here, but then we routed it up there. So we're gonna be completely getting rid of that tank. And what this does is it gives us a pressure relief valve on the very top, which will go straight to the coolant reservoir down there. We can completely get rid of that secondary tank down there and it gets rid of this interesting looking thing right there. So if you guys can see on the very front there, we ended up getting a like a raw sort of, uh, a raw brush look. It looks so much nicer than what you guys can see down there. So fingers crossed it all fits up. It doesn't look like it's any bigger than the standard, um, than the standard housing, but we should be fine. If not, we can always fab something up. I can give it to Dan and he can maybe like twist it and curve it out there so it gets out of the way of the intercooler piping. But um, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a whole lot nicer down there. I cannot wait to see what that's gonna look like in the car. So they're both coming over from NZ. I could imagine they're probably made to order. So they're gonna be doing all that over there. Um, once again, I have not spoken to them. It's not a sponsorship. I just really liked their parts. I reached out to them and nothing really came of it. But anyway, I still wanted to really use their parts. Might be able to work something out in the future, but who knows, I don't really mind. It's the parts that I wanted to use in the FD. I was gonna get them anyway. I'm super happy about it. The last thing we need now is an ECU. Okay, so although putting Permatex on something as stupid as a Mac valve, um, it's probably overkill. Uh, I want to do it anyway, simply because I do not want this thing to leak anywhere. Um, you know, I, I could just go in and, you know, just plug in all the vac lines and do everything I need to do. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to make sure that this thing has no vac leaks whatsoever. So I'm just going to take my time, make sure it's all good, use a little bit of permatex everywhere I sort of go, and um, that way we can sort of try and eliminate as many leaks as we possibly can. So we're just going to do that and build this MAC valve. So port three. Uh, vents to atmosphere, then we have port 2 and port 1. Uh, port 1 is your in or your reference and then port 2 is what comes out. So I'm um, just going to make this all work together and uh, yeah, probably don't need to do that one because that doesn't do anything anyway. Beautiful, so now we can go and mount this in the car somewhere. I'm not quite sure where yet, we'll make it work. <laughs> right, so now I'm just working around how, well, I, I mounted the Mac valve just up here. It's sort of near where all the fan relays are. It's nice and tucked out of the way and I can also do some wiring and sort of follow it along with everything else. There might also be a sensor down here that I don't utilize that I can also plug the Mac valve into and it looks kind of nice and little, nice little and tidy out of the way. So um, anyway, we have a boost source, uh, which is port one. Uh, port two, just breeze and vents to atmosphere. And port three, we go then to the top part of the Turbo Smart wastegate, which you guys can see we have an outlet for just here, right there. And then on the opposite side, we also have, if you guys can see down there, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to get my little lens down in there. I don't know if you can see that down there. Come on. That right there just goes to our boost source as well. So, this is a two way connection. Um, one of them just goes to the regular sort, like boost source. One of them goes to the adjusted source from the Mac valve. So, uh, first of all, we're going to plumb in our source and also tee it off and plumb it into here. So, this one right here is just going to go into our standard boost source and not our modified one. Uh, so, we'll do that as well.
So that right there is the first little bit of back line that we need to do. Once again, it's all nice and tucked out the way and I'm probably most likely gonna shorten this down here so it just wraps around the front there um, and goes straight to the waist gate. So the next biggest thing that we need, um, unfortunately, uh, it looks like I have six mil back line here and these two are, um, these two are four. So I'm gonna have to get a uh, four to six back line T-piece that's going to have to replace that T piece right there. I'm going to have to get some proper clamps because those small clamps don't fit my back line that I have. Um, and then also we need to get a 6mm uh, back line with some heat shielding to go and onto the front port of that wastegate down there. So that's going to be a nightmare to get to, but we will be able to get to it. That's no worries at all. We should be fine. If not, we can just remove that dump right there. It'll probably help a whole bunch as well. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for me today. I've developed a little bit of a list for motorsports accessories next time we go. So we need to get some six more backline, uh, a four to four T-piece with a six outlet, if I can find one. Um, if not, let's change the whole lot to six. Clamps are four mil and six mil because none of my clamps actually fit. Uh, the heat sleeve for a six mil and also a six mil outlet for the Mac valve if we do need it. At the moment, we have everything to be able to block off uh, everything that we need. So we do have some six mil caps right there as well as a whole heap of uh, little tiny four mils as well. So we have so we have more than enough to block up everything and do everything we need to do. Um, then I guess the coils can go in, this can go on top, and then we can start piping in everything. And uh, then the ECU, and then everything. It's probably another good month's worth of work in it. We have to go get it tuned. Oh man. I will admit, I've learned a whole lot after doing this, and I am very happy. I'm extremely happy with how everything has come so far. It's been looking absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to, uh, to finalize this setup. It's gonna look so good, it's gonna sound so good, it's gonna run so good. I'm so happy. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah. Hey, first of all, I'm not trying to be someone I'm not. But there's plenty different ways for you to go and get your props. You don't need to try pretending living lifestyles you ain't got. That's that shit I told myself when I was low and feeling lost. Learning lessons pay the cost while they watching Hugo Boss.